Good morning. Um, I'm Nilo Farbayat. I was born in 1993 uh, in Afghanistan. When I had just two years, Taliban came for the first time and took the control of Afghanistan. During that war, I endured. A rocket hit it in our home, and my elder brother was killed. He had only 17 years old, and when a sharp nail hit it on his heart, he could only run from a room to the yard. Uh, when my parents saw his dead body, they forgot about me. There was our neighbor. He saw that there is a little baby inside, and she endured. They took me to the nearest clinic, but the clinic couldn't do anything for me because I was bleeding badly, and they took me to uh, ICRC hospital. I, I endured really badly with 32 sharp needles in all my body, my, my arm, my elbow joint, my leg, and my spine, important part. I, I passed seven hours surgery alone without my family. After one week, my parents remembered that they have a daughter. Where is she? And they started to ask about me. Our neighbor told that Nilifar is in hospital. My father decided to come and visit me. On his way to hospital, Taliban shot it on him and injured. He couldn't come and meet me. And after one week or one and a half week, I don't remember very good that one, uh, another rocket hit the same room where I was in hospital, destroyed half of the room and injured my aunt. Those are the days look like in the middle of war. After six months, I discharged and I came back home. That injury paralyzed me and changed my life forever. Since then, I'm carrying a permanent disability. Being a woman is not easy in Afghanistan. And disability makes all the challenges double. Society was not accepting me, and I started to fight. I fought at school when I had to face with a very, very bad behavior of my classmates. After school, I found when I enrolled in a center for people with disability and I became stronger. I became stronger when I started playing table tennis and I received my first medal from that. I became stronger when I started to learn English and computer school uh, skills and made a class for women and children and I was teaching them different subjects. And I was receiving a small salary. It was not enough good, but I learned from that time to live independently and, and uh, improve and uh, can live uh, by myself. At the uh, end, I was not finishing my school. It was the last year of my school that I started working with International Committee of the Red Cross. And I had to change from my school from uh, day to night and uh, to a main school. I was the first girl from my family, and, uh, and I still am the first girl, yes, from my family and relatives that attending a main school in Afghanistan. When I started my working, uh, two men from our relatives came and told my, uh, my mother to, to don't allow her to work at ICRC because it was a foreign NGO year. And uh, it's a big shame for our family that Nilofar is attending in a main school. Uh, evening is um, not safe for women. No one stay out of home on that time. But I continued. On 2013, my life totally changed. When I started playing basketball at ICRC in an open ground. With a lot of challenges, me and my teammates, we could uh, continue and improve. After seven months, I played the first wheelchair basketball game in Afghanistan. A lot of media came. 
made a lot of repairs, and one of my uncles saw me on the news, and on that time called to my father to stop her. I saw her that it's, it's a big shame that Nilfar is uh, playing basketball in front of a huge number of men. Even, even my brothers were not agree with my lifestyle. They were never proud of me. They, they never spoke about me. They never told their friends that I'm their sister. Even sometimes they tried to stop me, especially in the winter when I was not able to go to training alone and I needed them, I needed them help, and most of the time the, the answer was a big no. Fortunately, I had support of my father. When, when my brother told me to stay at home, my father said no. You cannot stop her today from training. If you stop today her from going to basketball, the next day you will tell her to do not go to office. And the next time, you will tell her to stay at home like all other women in Afghanistan. The same year, I started to go to university and I studied law. At first, my plan was to, to know about my rights and uh, help myself and other women to how to achieve them. It was not easy at all. I was working eight hours a day, and in the evening, I was going for three more hours to study. And every night, my brother was coming to pick up me, and every night he was telling, I cannot continue like this. I cannot come. And I was not able to go home alone. It's really not safe for no one, not only for women. But I didn't quit. I continued like that for more five years. In 2017, I was a liar and a good and a wealthy basketball player. For the first time, they selected me as a captain of wheelchair basketball national team. And I fly for my first international game to Indonesia for Bali Cup. We could win the championship. Where I was selected as the most valuable player, it was a super nice experience. When we returned, I remember one of our colleagues came and told me, I, I, I watched your game, you played very nice, and you had a, you, you had a good um, play strong like a man. And I was well, I, I, I never want to be like a strong man. I never compare. I want to be a strong woman and I do my best. At the time, I was trying a lot to, to work as a liar and as an athlete to improve the quality of life of women and also people with disability in Afghanistan. I made a lot of speech. And I took a lot of meetings with cooperation of uh, other NGOs that uh, they were working for people with disability to, to make school and universities accessible for them. All school and universities are still they are not accessible for people with disability. But the recent year, it was, it was much better. Most of people uh, with disability were able to go to university. Um, the best moment of my life happened uh, in basketball car. I met a lot of friends, I visited different countries and people, and it uh, helped me to grow up, to know my ability and to see my strength. Through the sport, I joined the society. I, I changed my life, and I'm sure it happened for all athletes. Me and my, my teammates, we work hard to open a new chapter for, in history of Afghanistan to make a way for those girls that they want to follow it easily. Unfortunately, last August, again, Taliban destroyed my, my life for a second time. Immigration is the hardest part of my story. Nowhere can be like our home, and no, nowhere can be like our homeland. Our country is our identity. On 18th of August, I fly to Afghanistan. I spent two hard days and nights inside Kabul airport. It was summer, 
There was only warm water, there was no food, and the only sound that I was hearing was shooting from Taliban. I saw thousands of people, and I recognized their fear. I saw how, how they want to save their life and how they want to escape from this country in any way they could. It was the first time I stood in front of Taliban and I told them to allow me to take the Spanish flight. They didn't answer me because I was a woman. For them, a woman is not a human being. On the time, I told my husband that I will not stay here and I don't allow a group of tourists to control my life and make rules for me to follow. I will not allow them to do the same thing that they did 25 years ago. I'm a two-time victim of war in Afghanistan. Once, when Taliban came in Afghanistan for the first time, they took my health. And the second time, they took my, all my achievement, my happiness, my, my future, and my country. It was, it was not easy to leave the country. Um, I'm happy that I'm here. It's like eight months I'm here and I'm alive. I, I have uh, the third chance to be alive and, and be in this universe. But still, my husband and I, every time we're speaking about Afghanistan and we are missing badly. On 21st of August, I was in Madrid. During this time, I learned to be strong. I learned to start from scratch and improve again. Here I am the vice of refugee. I'm trying to be the vice of those women. They cannot raise their voice and those refugees that they face a lot of challenges. I have my association free women for Afghanistan and working for women here now. Be kind. Be grateful for all that you have. Be thankful that you are in a good health. You are safe. You have your family by your side. And you are living in a peaceful country. Be kind, be happy, and help others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.